I have a show to do. You think you deserve treats right now, but you don't. Hopefully he'll leave us alone, so let's get started. Hello, uh, welcome to another Cybersecurity 101. Uh, I'm Mark Hemingway, Creative Content Director here at Archer Energy Solutions. Today we're going to talk about, it's called Fuzzer. So um, I never heard this one before, I uh, came across it in just some research. Uh, so I was hoping that today we could uh, figure it out. If you're not familiar with how this particular show works, I use uh, ChatGPT to help me learn cybersecurity. So I ask it questions, it gives me answers, hopefully which you know are the correct answer, because at the very bottom it says ChatGPT can make mistakes. So it's like well, it's like us. Uh, so consider checking important information. So this isn't vital. So my my fact checkers will be you. So if you could go into the comments below and let me know what's wrong. And also, you know, if there's anything we missed. So I would love to have a comment below. That would be great. So, but let's get right into it. So loaded into ChatGPT is, what is Fuzzer in cybersecurity? A Fuzzer is a tool used in cybersecurity to automatically inject malformed or unexpected data into software interfaces to discover vulnerabilities. Oh, okay. I'm not quite sure how it does that, but it's just one of my questions I've asked in the past is having to do with techniques. So are there different types of fuzzing techniques? Yes, there are several types of fuzzing techniques, including dumb fuzzing, smart fuzzing, and coverage guiding guided fuzzing. Okay, smart, dumb, and coverage. Interesting. Let's learn a little more about those particular techniques. So explain those techniques. Dumb fuzzing involves random input generation without much intelligence. Smart fuzzing involves more targeted input based on understanding of the input structure. Coverage guided fuzzing uses feedback from code coverage analysis to guide the generation of inputs towards unexplored paths. Okay, interesting. So, hmm, there you go. All right, so we know different types of techniques used. I'm sure there's more, um, but I'm kind of still wondering how an actual fuzzer works, or fuzzing, fuzzer, fuzzing works. Uh, can you explain the process of using a fuzzer to discover vulnerabilities? All right, so the process typically involves selecting a target application or system, okay? Determining the input interfaces, such as API endpoints, or file formats, configuring the fuzzer to generate and send various inputs to these interfaces, monitoring the application's behavior for crashes or unexpected behavior, and analyzing any discovered issues for potential vulnerabilities. Interesting. All right, well, based on that, it sounds to me like, I mean, everything can go good and bad, but it sounds like this one's more for good, but can also probably be for bad because it's it's going in there to to find the the vulnerabilities and to exploit them. So um, fuzzers can be used for both good and bad actors. Can be used by both security researchers and attackers. Security researchers are fuzzing to uncover vulnerabilities to improve software security, while attackers may use fuzzers to discover and exploit vulnerabilities for malicious purposes. Okay, well, that makes sense. So it's just basically going in there to find the vulnerabilities. So if you're a bad person, you're gonna go in there and you're gonna find all the things you can do and how you can get in and wreak havoc. And the good guys are going in to find those, to fix those before the bad guys find those. So kind of seems like a, what's that? Like in Contra, you know, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, select, start. To get a fuzzer to get in to do whatever you want to do, and it's just doing the work for you, kind of like, you know, infinite lives for Contra. How fun. This is kind of similar to the last question that I usually ask, but it's a little different. So uh, are there any notable examples of successful fuzzing campaigns that led to significant security discoveries? One famous case is the discovery 
of the Heartbleed vulnerability uh, in the OpenSSL cryptographic software library in 2014. Another is the discovery of the Spectra and Meltdown, okay, I've heard of that, uh, vulnerabilities in modern microprocesses in 2018. These discoveries were made through fuzzing techniques by security researchers. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, one last question before my last question. How can developers mitigate the risks identified through fuzzing? By implementing robust input validation and sanitization mechanisms, using secure coding practices to prevent buffer overflows and other memory corruption vulnerabilities, performing regular security code reviews, and using integrating fuzz testing into the development and testing process. All right, so there's a bunch of different methods to do that then. Okay. All right, that brings us to our last question of the show that I like to ask, which is, what is a real-life incident that involved fuzzing? In 2020, when researchers discovered the boot hole vulnerability affecting the Groob, the Groob 2 boot loader, that's a tough one to say, uh, which is used by most Lynx systems, the vulnerability could allow attackers to gain control over the boot process and install malicious code. It was discovered through fuzzing techniques by researchers at Eclipsium. Well, there you go. There's a real life example right there for you. So uh, it's good and bad as usually everything is, which is sad. But anyway, thanks again for joining me for another episode of Cybersecurity 101. Um, don't forget to follow us on our socials at uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And as always, uh, go visit us on our YouTube channel at ArcherU. Uh, you can find hundreds upon hundreds of videos uh, that we put together for you. So check those out. Uh, until next week, uh, have a good one. Bye. You can catch new episodes every Thursday. Follow us on YouTube at ArcherU. Like, subscribe, and click the bell notification to be notified when a new episode has been released. Is there a question or a topic you'd like Mark to address on an upcoming episode of Cybersecurity 101? Leave them in the comments below and check back in every Thursday for a brand new episode.